A fatty! <laughs> okay, well, I'm just letting people chime in here. Um, I'm going to start off tonight. I've been thinking a lot about, like, the main thing is, is why people fuck this up. Because it's so idiot-proof. So I've really came to the conclusion, I knew this before, it's straight up fear, okay? So, right off the bat, people need to understand that your fucking fat fucking gut is food, okay? Fat is food. Body fat is fucking food. I need a fucking shirt that says that. Hashtag fat is food, okay? If you understand that your body fat is food, it makes the idea of not eating for days a lot more acceptable, okay? People need to understand, though, to utilize the body fat and turn it into food efficiently, you have to fast, okay? You can't spike your fucking insulin with eating or anything else because that will basically halt the body fat burning process, okay? So the main rule of thumb with this fucking way of eating, with a fasting focused lifestyle, is you need to fast as long as you can. You need to keep your insulin as low as you fucking can for as long as you can. So it's like, how do I keep my insulin low? Don't eat, number one. Don't fucking chew fucking gum, okay? Don't fucking put any sweeteners in any, any of your shit. Don't fucking take in excess, even small amounts of calories, okay? Understand that. Your fucking fat gut is fucking food. So if you're fucking like 200 pounds overweight or 100 pounds overweight or 50 pounds overweight, you got a pile of fucking food on your body that needs to be ate. And as long as you're fucking not fasting and you're still stuffing your fucking face, you're not going to burn the goddamn body fat. Okay? The other thing. Everyone always asks me, can I still take my fucking vitamins and supplements? Number one, who said you need vitamins and supplements in the first fucking place? You don't need them. You got everything you need on your fucking body. The only things you need in excess is fucking the two salts. That's why we fucking drink the two fucking salts. Because you use, those, you use a lot of those two specific salts, sodium and fucking potassium. Every time you take a piss, you're pissing out lots of fucking salt. Okay? So that's how you fucking keep the fast long and, ma and basically manageable. Okay, when you fast on plain water, you get fucked up. Your body goes into like basically a fucking survival mode when you fast on plain water because there's no fucking goddamn electrolytes. Okay, so that, I just wanted to start with that. Your body fat is fucking food. Get that through your fucking head. Okay, and because your body fat's food, you got thousands and thousands and thousands of motherfucking calories on your fat fucking gut that can be burnt if you fucking fast. Okay? Okay, I'll start answering some questions here. One person just asked about taking Tylenol for headaches. No, don't take fucking Tylenol. Don't be a fucking pussy. Deal with it. You're having withdrawals. Deal with the fucking headaches. If they, they, if they don't go away, drink more fucking water. If your ketone strips are showing very dark and you have a fucking headache after you've been into this a few days, drink more fucking water. I'm just going to rewind this here. Okay, here's a question. How does fasting, Hassan asks, how does fasting affect your hair? Some people can lose hair. It's not from the fasting so much, it's from the shock to the system. People lose hair flipping over to just a different diet. People will lose hair fucking doing Weight Watchers for fuck's sakes. Okay? You can lose hair anytime your body gets shocked. It's not fasting, it's fucking the shock to the system. Okay, and guess what? It grows back. Okay, it grows fucking back. Stay with the fucking goddamn priorities. Lose the fucking weight. Get healthy. Look at people. Okay, you worried about hair loss? Look at all the motherfuckers that jump to the fucking chemo meds when they get cancer. They lose hair like a son of a bitch. And if they actually do beat the cancer, their hair comes back usually. And chemo's fucking brutal. Fucking brutal. Okay? So don't worry about your motherfucking hair. Okay? Focus on the goal. Lose the fucking weight. Get clean. Get lean. Get lean and clean. Okay, that's what I am. Lean and fucking clean. Okay, because as long as you have fat on your body that shouldn't be there, you're dirty. Your fat stores toxins. You gotta lose all the weight. Okay, I did a talk there on the weekend at a house, and I was talking about this where 
people don't, they got to understand that, say if you're a guy or a girl, and you're like 100 pounds overweight, or 50 pounds overweight, and you lose weight, good. Like if you're 100 pounds overweight and you lost 50 pounds, good job. But you're still fucking dirty. You need to lose it all. Okay, lose it all. I don't fucking, if somebody weighs 500 pounds, and they've lost 200 pounds, and now they're 300, that's really good. But keep going. Lose it all. You're still a fucking fat ass at 300 fucking pounds. Okay, and you're still dirty and toxic. And you'll still be having toxic withdrawals and detox symptoms right down to where you're fucking ripped. Here's the thing. If you're fucking not lean, you're fat. If you're not lean, you're fat. Okay, and like the obesity fucking goddamn studies that are done on obesity just to get this through people's head how bad this is. Pretty much the obesity rate, if you're over 30 years old, is 100%. In my opinion, everybody that's over 30 pretty much is fat. Okay? you. I put a picture up. I... I did a, uh, like I've been training, not even really trying to build any muscle. I've been doing fasting experiments all fucking summer. And right now, I actually gained three pounds of fucking lean muscle with no fat. And I'm the same body fat percentage as I was now as I was about three months ago. And I look at myself right now and I'm what you should be. I'm average. I'm lean. That's what you should be. If you got fucking 10, 15, 20 pounds, unless it's you're specific to something like sumo wrestling or fucking powerlifting or something where you got to be a fat ass, every single fucking person on here should be fucking ripped. There's no reason why you should ever have excess fat on your fucking body. You're, if you're fat, you're not in a natural state of being. Okay? Cavemen weren't fat. If you're fat, you're not in a natural state. That's why we got to take fucking extreme measures to fucking bust all the fat off your fat asses with fucking salt water. Okay? Understand this. Lose all the fucking weight. Um, here's a question. Tamika asks, how has this affected those taking blood pressure meds? It fucking drops your blood pressure. Okay? See, don't, Sometimes when people ask me questions, it's like they're asking me like they're going to be on their fucking blood pressure meds till they're dead. No. You're not going to be on your meds for more than a fucking week when you start this. Okay? Unless you're fucking extremely fucked up, a lot of people can cut their blood pressure meds right when they start their first fast. Because a lot of times your blood pressure is sky high too because your fucking goddamn blood sugar is through the goddamn roof. And you don't even know it. You're pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetic and you don't even fucking know it. A lot of people don't even know it until I start telling them symptoms that they probably have. They didn't even know if they're urinating all the time, drinking piles of water, and they're fat. They're fucking pre-diabetic. It's fucking not rocket science. Your kidneys are trying to kick all that sugar out of your fucking bloodstream. Okay, and that's why you get kidney disease. And that's how you fuck your fucking kidneys. So don't Blood pressure meds, if you have all your organs and they're all functioning and you're on a blood pressure med, you can stay on it until your blood pressure drops below and then go off it. Or if your blood pressure is just a hair higher than it should be, fucking just cut the med cold turkey and start fasting. You can actually even tell that your blood actually gets thinner when you start fasting. It actually, you can see it. I knew it like when I stabbed my finger doing blood tests. You can see how your blood actually gets thinner. I've had people tell me this too because their blood sugar was like fucking 300 or 200. All of a sudden they start fasting and their blood actually thins out. Okay, and then your arteries soften up because you get rid of all the inflammation that's fucking your goddamn arteries. Blood pressure drops like a fucking rock. Uh, so Jocelyn did ask. No, So she's asking me about Tylenol and Advil. Don't be a fucking pussy. You don't need your fucking meds. Fuck, just fucking fast. You don't need fucking goddamn painkillers. Fucking pussies. That's the whole reason this fucking works. Because it's fucking hard, it works, but you can't be a fucking pussy. Okay? That's the whole thing. It works only too good. You just gotta commit. You just gotta commit. You gotta tell people to fuck off. You gotta tell people to shut the fuck up. And do your thing and lose fucking weight. Then once you've lost all the weight, be like, look at me now, motherfucker. Look at me now. Okay, results talk. That's how it works. Uh, Joanne asks, can you talk about water adaptation and how to achieve it? Dry fasting. What happens is when you dry fast, 
You'll push your body's comfort zone into a situation where your body has no exogenous water. Your body has no exogenous water, meaning water you've drank through your mouth. So it's got to use the fucking fluids on your body. And to do that, your body starts breaking down body fat to get those fluids. Remember though, when you dry fast hardcore, for all the people watching, you're never going to feel good dry fasting for fucking long periods of time. It's for fucking healing. When an animal gets fucked up, like your dog, if they get fucked up and sick, they walk out into the bush and sit there and fucking dry fast. They're not running around, okay? So that's how you get water adapted, but it's, you just have the minimum. It's like you're in survival mode. You just have the minimum amount of water to live and electrolytes to live in your body fat. Your body will start breaking down fat to get the fucking electrolytes. That's how dry fasting works, okay? You know when you're starting to get water adapted because the first time you ever dry fast, you might get the nastiest fucking headache ever, and then your body will make that shift, and then you'll actually start burning fat to get the fluid. It's actually pretty amazing, and especially if you log all your urine like I've done. I did a seven-day hard dry fast before, hard dry fast, no water contact at all, and I pissed in bottles the whole fucking time, and I was still urinating a little bit right to the bitter end. Where's the water coming from? My fucking body's breaking down fat. It's metabolic fucking water. That's where it comes from. Another question. Skylar asks, can you take multivitamins well... Can you take multivitamins while fasting? You don't need fucking multivitamins. Just fucking fast. You're doing more harm than good for fuck's sakes with your stupid fucking vitamins. Because you know what happens? You're, you're feeding your body these vitamins. And then your body can just be lazy. And it doesn't have to generate its own fucking goddamn vitamins that are already there usually. Like fucking calcium and magnesium and all this shit's already there. Okay, so your body doesn't have to fucking start using it. Same idea with fucking people that fucking take drugs. Fucking testosterone steroids what happens they're taking all this test and then their balls don't have to produce it anymore and then all of a sudden when they go off the fucking drugs they have no fucking testosterone fucking naturally produced and their fucking sex drives drops through the fucking floor okay you understand when you fucking put your body to the goddamn test it starts to fucking do things you don't even know are fucking possible okay people don't even understand what your body's capable of when you fucking choke it when you choke shit from your body your body will produce it's amazing what it'll do. Pull things away. Pull things away. That's what you do. That's how I figured all this shit out. Like I was talking about the other day, I was talking with somebody about studies and shit. The way I do things here, see, most people are pussies, okay? They're scared to fucking take action. So what they do is they have a fucking problem. Like, let's say they got a fucking, let's say they got type 2 diabetes. So they're reading everything about type 2 diabetes, blah, 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 blah. Then you take the person that has type 2 diabetes that had it and beat it with fasting because they just did it because they listened to a bunch of fucking stories about people that beat it. So they just did it because they had a set of balls and then they beat it. So guess what? That person, do you think they're going to read an article that says that fasting does not cure type 2 diabetes? Obviously not because they fucking beat it. So all of a sudden, all those articles that say that fasting wouldn't fix it, those people throw those articles in the goddamn garbage. And they're only going to read the ones that fucking talk about how fasting beats it and why. See what I mean? When you fucking take risks and push your fucking comfort zone, you figure shit out real quick. You fucking figure shit out. So like I said, start the fucking fast right now, tonight. Okay? Post accountability pictures on that fucking group. Put your fucking fat ass up on that group so you can face that judgment. So then it makes you stick to this. Every time people fail, almost every time I talk to somebody, they fuck up. They make it a week, which is still fucking good. As long as you're fasting more than you're fucking up, you're going to hit your goal sooner or later. Okay? But some people, I ask them right away. It's like, did you post pictures? Did you at least even take pictures of your body for yourself? No. No. Do it. It fucking holds your fucking fat ass accountable. Even if you have skin issues, take a picture of the fucking skin issue and fucking throw that up. Okay, You're, you'll motivate other people and help them. Okay. Um, here's a good question. David, Dave, he says, I shattered my heel a month ago. Will fasting help? hurt or have no effect on my healing. I want to lose 25 pounds while I'm laid up. Fucking, this is a perfect example of how good fasting works. Okay? Because guess what? 
You don't have to do anything to lose the fucking weight. Okay? And it'll help you it'll help your heel heal up quicker. You can sit on your fucking ass. I was actually talking about this story like a million times about that guy that weighed 900 pounds and ended up fucking killing himself. And it's funny how all these mainstream trainers and mainstream dietitians and nutritionists, they can't even help a guy like this. Because you know why? Because they can't tell him to stop eating because they're fucking pussies. So what they do is they fucking have an intervention with this fat guy and they fucking have a bariatric surgeon there and they're like, well, if you lose 150 fucking pounds, maybe we can actually give you bariatric surgery. Well, if he lost 150 fucking pounds on his own, why would he need the goddamn surgery? This is where guys like me come in. I would just go in there, fucking kick his fucking wife out of the goddamn house because she was enabling it enabling his fat ass, feeding him, and I'd fucking sit there, and all I'd have to do is tell him to not fucking eat and sit there like a guard dog. Like, how good of a fat loss coach am I? You could be this too. See, people are like, fuck, it's, it's just personality. You know it works. I just sit there and I wouldn't let anything go in his fucking mouth. How hard is that? He can't even get up off the fucking bed. He can't go fucking get his own food. Fuck, I'd cut fucking 100 pounds off the fat bastard in six weeks. Do you understand how good this works? If it works that good for that extreme case, it's the best fucking way of fat loss out there. Okay, you, I always look at extremes, always. Even the way I'm training now. I tra I'm training extreme fucking high intensity fucking weight training, extreme. The kind of pain that most people won't even put themselves through, not even close. But I do huge rest times. I almost train now how I fast. I train fucking hard and destroy a muscle group and rest it for a whole week. Just like the way I eat. I eat big and I fucking fast long. You fat asses don't need to eat big. You just need to fucking fast long. Same idea. I'll get into that. If people have questions about exercise a little bit, I can talk about it. But Katie asks, here's a good question. Has this ever helped someone with endometriosis? Yes. Yes. There's a lady. In fact, she was an RN. And her daughter had endometriosis. And we beat it with fucking dry fasting. She was off her meds. Okay? Dry fasting. Dry fasting will heal everything. Everything. Okay? Everything. So just start. Just fucking start. I like, I'd rather hear people ask me questions. Will this heal something once they've actually started fucking fasting? Don't ask these questions when you haven't even tried it. Get your fucking ass in the fucking grocery store, go buy the salts, some good quality water, and start fasting. And then once you fasted for seven fucking days and lost some fucking weight, then ask your goddamn questions if it'll heal this and heal that, because by then you probably healed it up. Nancy asks, do we avoid fruit until we're lean? Avoid food until you're lean. Food, okay? I don't promote a fucking mainstream ketogenic diet once you're lean because it's fucking junk. Okay, we're forcing ketosis here. We're not on an exogenous ketogenic diet, meaning we're eating th the fats we need. We're burning motherfucking body fat, which is food, like I said at the start of this fucking video, with fasting, okay, with not eating. We're burning body fat because we're forcing our bodies to burn the fucking body fat. Okay, we're not starving. If you're fat, you aren't starving. Okay, in fact, nobody probably even on this fucking group, maybe one or two people other than myself even know what true starvation fucking feels like. True starvation is hardcore shit. You, on, you have no fucking clue what it feels like to fucking be starving to death. Okay? So avoid food. And once you're fucking ripped, you can fuck around with your macros. Fruit and fucking vegetables and a fucking some sort of good fucking quality meat. And some fats. It's easy. And then you just dial it in. You're already lean at that point. Fuck around with it. Go to the fucking gym. See how you feel. Fuck around with your macros. But until you're fucking lean, fucking don't eat for as long as humanly fucking possible. Okay. Here's a good little testimonial. Christopher says, fix my blood pressure right away. Now he's at 114 over 72. Perfect. Just start fucking fasting. Those are such mainstream fucking meds. You don't even need to be on them because your doctor's a fucking idiot. More like idiot or a fucking 
pussy because if he knows about this stuff, he's a fucking pussy for not telling you about it or he's just an idiot because he doesn't know a fucking thing. And then they got you on the drugs because that's all they know how to do and that's what they've been taught because they're a bunch of fucking drug dealing crooks. Um... Kristen asks, why does my mouth get so raw within the first bite or two of refeeding? I can't say why. Okay, you're fasting long periods of time. I don't have that issue. So obviously you are detoxing. I don't know your whole story. Um, there is definitely, you can get canker sores. Um, one of my moderators, who actually is an RN as well, uh, I got her dry fasting and she got some pretty nasty canker sores on her tongue. Never had them until she dry fasted. You see, that's another thing too when I talk about being lean and fucking clean. Once you lose all the fat, the fat's full of toxins, especially if you're a smoker or a fucking massive drug user, meds, whatever. Once you're lean, all that dirty shit's gone. But when you, if you're still eating garbage food, even though you're fasting and you're not gaining any weight, you're going to have things like bad breath. And other shit like that, maybe some breakouts because you're still, you're always detoxing. It's like, say right now, like right now, so right now I'm like, what, 11.6% body fat according to that DEXA scan the other day. If I went and ate a bunch of junk this week, like stuff that was definitely had toxins in it, I will fucking probably get a little bit of fucking, some sort of detox effect. I don't know what it would be, but I'll get something. So, or like bad breath, it's a huge one. People that are eating junk, even once they're lean and still leading a fasting-focused lifestyle, will get things like bad breath for sure because they're eating junk. Okay, to fix that, make sure you're getting in lots of fruit and vegetables once you're fucking ripped, not you fat asses, because that will hydrate you really well and you won't have any bad breath whatsoever. fucking ever. When I dry fast all day, my hydration levels are better than yours. Okay, I'm extremely hydrated because of the way I dry fast and the way I eat. Because I eat so much fluid that I'm just like a fucking sponge. And then the whole next day I don't need to drink any water. Um, here's a good one. Pauline asks, should I stop taking my thyroid meds right away? If you still got your fucking thyroid, cut the fucking thyroid meds. Tr trust me. I get this question like fucking probably twice, twice at least once a day. Okay, there's so many people that are on thyroid meds. Usually the reason is because they went to the fucking doctor and their thyroid's not producing hormone like it should. It's not because you're not fat because of that. Your fucking thyroid's fucked up because you're a fat ass and then the doctor tries to blame it on genetics, fucking bullshit, or fucking like just you basically having thyroid issues and that's why you're fat. That's what they try to say. So then they sell you on these meds because you think you're going to lose weight because they're going to give you thyroid meds. Cut the fucking goddamn meds. Those meds are junk. Okay? And just to hit the nail on the head for a minute about the fucking, the stupid bullshit when people talk about genetics. Genetics is, this makes me so fucking mad that they're to the point now where they're actually calling obesity a fucking disease. Here's the thing. If it was genetics, you would not be here today. Evolution would have cleaned your weak ass out fucking about 100,000 fucking years ago. If you're fucking genetically challenged, you would be dead. You would not be here. That's how you know all this crap is not genetics. Fuck your doctor. If he says it's genetics, he's an idiot. Even breast cancer. Because there's fucking basically one type of gene that a lot of women always, I talk to them, they blame their breast cancer on this fucking gene. It's fucking bullshit. Because here's the fucking truth. This one gene, it's like BR, uh, breast cancer one, breast cancer two gene or whatever it is. The gene itself, if you're fasting and eating fucking healthy food and you're not a fucking fat ass, the fucking gene would make it, instead of maybe one in a million chance of getting fucking cancer or growing cancer, I say not getting it, you don't get cancer, you fucking earn it. So this gene would maybe give you, instead of being one in one million chance of fucking getting cancer, you'd be like two in one million, which is still like zero. Okay, it's like fucking the same as getting fucking struck by lightning. It's not the fucking goddamn genetics. It's fucking your goddamn lifestyle and fucking diet. Same with, like, all this shit. 
They're starting to call obesity a fucking disease. Well, isn't that convenient to call obesity a disease because then you can go to the doctor and they're like, oh, you're obese, you have a disease. <laughs> and then they can just sell you meds out the fucking ass until the day you die, which wouldn't be very long. It's such fucking bullshit. Obesity, yeah, like the, going back to the genetics, if obesity was genetic, everybody would be extinct for fuck's sakes. Like it's such a fucking goddamn motherfucking scam that I want to slap people upside the fucking head when they talk about genetics. Fucking genetics, unreal. If your doctor ever says it's genetic, get a new doctor. Christopher says he's down five pounds, down to 175. That's awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Um, <laughs> David says, my arm and stomach is sagging like hell. How do I solve this, Cole? My stomach skin is almost to my penis. Will dry fasting help it? Yes, dry fasting will be the best thing you could do, okay? Check out the testimonials. Go to my Snake Diet Facebook business page. It's just called Snake Diet. And start scrolling down. I put like the best testimonials on there. There's one with a girl who's actually a friend of mine's wife. So she got lean and clean first. So she fasted hardcore, snake juice, Basically, she got lean enough where she was eating one meal a day. Okay, once you're fucking lean, you can maintain fairly well doing that. And if you don't, if you start gaining weight, you just use the fucking scale feedback. Okay? It's like, how do I maintain? Get on the fucking scale. If the fucking weight starts climbing up real slowly over a fucking few days, start fasting harder and eat less for fuck's sakes. But anyway, this girl, she's had kids and her stomach just was amazing how much the fucking skin healed up. Okay? You understand the autophagy effect when you dry fast. That skin, that extra skin is like weak cells. Okay, this is why the shit cures cancer. This is why the shit fucking cures everything. Because it eats the shit out of your fucking body. It's that aggressive. It kills everything. Everything. If you, if you got fucking something that is so powerful that it'll chew up loose skin cells, like bad cells that are fucking still actually skin cells, you got something that'll cure everything. It's a fucking cure all, okay? Dry fasting will cure fucking everything. Guess what? In the hospitals with cancer patients, once they've pretty much fucking killed them, what do you think they do for, at the very end to stretch their lives out a little bit? Fucking pull everything off them and make them dry fast. Dry fasting, motherfucker. Dry fasting will heal everything. Just do it. You can do a fucking 24-hour dry fasting routine with the coconut water, cucumbers, dry fast all fucking day, keep the calories down like maybe under 300, just go vegetables and heal yourself up, try to throw some 48s and 72-hour dry fasts in. Hard dry fasts are more aggressive than soft. Soft means you're making water contact, maybe brushing your teeth, nothing, but like when I do a hard dry fast, I do a motherfucking hard dry fast. I don't fucking touch water. I don't touch water, okay? Dave Wilson says, I beat type 2 diabetes thanks snake diet. Awesome, man. Type 2 diabetes is like a fucking common cold. That's how easy you can beat it with fasting. It's a fucking joke. Here's one from Angela. Hi, Cole, she says, I am wondering if you can recommend a compound exercise to replace leg curls and extensions. I already do squats and still... She must have meant straight-legged deadlifts. So here's the thing. Fucking squat. Squat until you fucking, your form breaks down. Okay? Squat hard. Fatigue everything with the fucking squatting first. Then, leg curls. Why would you want to replace leg curls? Those are fucking good. Leg extensions, if your knee is fucked up, Maybe leave them for a bit, but leg extensions won't kill you either. Just don't fucking try to set world records on the leg extension. Beat your legs up with the big stuff and then hit those fucking small ones at the end and crazy time under tension, high intensity. Like do one fucking set. One set that takes a full minute that just roasts your quads and get a spotter to fucking help so you burn the negative right out. 
So, so you, it's not even the positive that's burnt out. It's like doing a bicep curl. It's like this is the positive and the negative's going down. Fucking burn it the fuck out to where you can't even hold the negative and then your muscle is seriously fucking stimulated and you'll fucking grow and build fucking muscle. Just to hit that on the head for a sec, the way mainstream people train is a fucking joke. The goal when you fuck, if you want to build muscle, okay, building muscle, you want to fucking stimulate the muscle as hard and as fucking fast as you fucking can with high intensity training. Fucking basically rest pauses, uh, negatives, okay, all that shit. You need a fucking training partner to do a routine like this. Volume is a negative thing. Volume is bad. Because you know why? When you hit all this volume with shitty intensity, you're just digging this fucking inroad where your body has to recompensate that part before it can even fucking super compensate to start building more muscle. It's not a fucking goddamn long distance run. Everyone's like, oh, more reps and sets in the gym. Fucking bullshit. You want to build muscle? You murder the fucking muscle hardcore with fucking all that shit. Negatives. Burn the muscle the fuck out. And plus it saves your fucking joints. If you want to fucking read more about that shit, go read about Arthur Jones. He invented the Nautilus mas machines. Mike Menzer. Fucking guess who else practices? Mr. Six-Time, Mr. Olympia. That kicked everybody's ass. Dorian fucking Yates, who basically was mentored by Mike Menzer and who learned from fucking Arthur Jones. Okay, this is how you fucking build muscle and with big rest periods. You don't, if you're in the gym six or seven times a fucking week, your fucking workout's a joke. The, the intensity is a joke. I'm going to show people this. I'm going to pack so much fucking muscle on, on a fucking body that's drug free with fasting. It's going to blow your fucking minds in two months. And I'm only training four days a week. Um, let's see here. Lori foot asked, so lemon water, she said, first thing in the morning, doesn't matter hot or cold. You could drink a little bit of lemon water, but don't fucking mix the acids in your goddamn snake juice throughout the day because you'll rot your teeth out of your fucking head. I keep telling people this, okay? If you're going to take the acidic stuff, knock it back quick. Don't fucking go fucking taking it all day and drinking it all day or you'll fuck your fucking teeth. Um, here we go. Here's a good one. Sherry, she said, I've been telling everyone at the gym about the snake diet. Huge interest from people with inflammation issues. Fasting cures inflammation, okay? You will never, ever, 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 ever have an inflammation problem again when you fucking get lean from fasting, ever. Lean people can still have inflammation issues if they don't fast, because guess what? Over and above fucking your fucking shitty fucking sugary foods and all that, what do you think the biggest cause of inflammation is? Fucking insulin levels being high all fucking day. Guess what causes that? Fucking eating. And fucking sweeteners. Keep the fucking insulin down as long as you can. And you'll never have an inflammation issue ever again in your fucking life. Go to the doctors. Tell them to give you a C-reactive protein test. Get that tested when you get blood tests next time. If your numbers are good, you should basically have no C-reactive protein whatsoever. Okay, your liver produces it. Basically, and it's a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a tattletale basically to say if your body's going through lots of inflammation or not. Okay, like mine is so fucking low that they couldn't even pick it up. I had a YouTube video about that. Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. It's called Snake Diet. It's called Fasting Cures Inflammation. Ashley Gove asks, for the kidney shots, do you need the baking soda? So here's the thing. All is you need to fast for long periods of time is the fucking snake juice. The other stuff that I recommend is just stuff that's good for you and healthy and supports liver and kidney problems, okay? Like, apple cider vinegar is fucking good for a million things, okay? Especially fucking liver health because your liver's fucked and your kidneys are fucked up, okay? That's why the lemon juice is great for your kidneys, the citrates. The baking soda is great for your kidneys, okay? That's what that's all about. Make sure, though, if you're hammering back a little bit more baking soda on the day if you actually have a kidney issue or it, I can get into kidneys here so dry fasting is gonna make you kick stones if you got stone issues it will make them break it'll make your kidneys kick that shit and break it free 
okay? Calcium stones or whatever is in your kidneys. So understand, if you got kidney pain, that's because your kidneys are holding a bunch of sediment. I remember when I, here's a story about me actually. This will kind of explain some shit. So I did a five day dry fast one time, first long dry fast, okay? Then after that, I went into a dry fasting eating routine. So I was really lean. And so I was pretty much dry fasting all day and training and then eating fruit at night with my meat and fats, okay, fruit and vegetables, mostly fruit. What happened was I fucking got some kidney pain and it was like, what the fuck? And it was pressure. I thought it was my abs, but it wasn't. It was the kidney. And the next morning, I remember when I pissed, it was just full of sediment, full of fucking sediment. I didn't kick a big stone, but I was kicking stones like fucking crazy. And then I took the glass of piss at one point put it in the fridge and let it settle out. And then I poured the urine off the top of the piss and I like actually grabbed the fucking sediment and it's just like fucking stones. Okay, so dry fasting works that good. If you want to fucking heal a kidney problem, get your fucking ass dry fasting. Simple as that. It's going to be the best way to heal a kidney issue. Fasting on the snake juice isn't going to make you kick a stone like dry fasting may. Like snake juice might. But the dry fasting will fucking fix kidney problems. And then obviously when you rehydrate, that's a good time to knock back some baking soda to alkalize your kidneys again. Okay, here's one. Tiffany asks, when saltwater fasting, how long for each interval? Meaning, do I fast for a whole week or a month before eating again? Is there rest eating period? Fast as long as you fucking can. That's it. If you can fast a month, fast a month. If you can go a week, go a week. If you're going any less than 48 hours and you're fat, you're a pussy. Pretty simple, okay? Even 48s aren't even long enough. Fuck, I could have people fucking going 48s and overeating on their fucking 48s and not hardly even losing any weight because they don't burn any energy. That's another thing. The scale is your fucking friend, okay? The scale is your friend, it's called cause and effect, okay? So here's the thing. Your stupid little calorie calculators on the internet are bullshit. Because guess what? If you actually followed your calorie calculator, so you take your height and weight, which right off the bat people fuck up because they're putting in their current weight. It's your lean fucking weight you, you got to use. If you're 400 pounds and you're supposed to be 170, do you think you put in 400 pounds into the calculator? No, you put in 170. But either way, the calculator's bullshit anyway. Because most people, if they put the numbers into the, the fucking calculator spits out, they won't even get any results. Here is how you figure out how much food you need to fucking eat to maintain. You use the fucking scale. You get on the scale before you eat every night. Log it, okay? Eat your fucking food and throughout the week create a trend. And then you can see exactly if your weight's creeping up, cut the fucking food back. And if you want to try to figure out the calories of the amount of food you're eating, fucking do the math and get a fucking food scale and figure it out. This is how you figure out maintenance calories. This is how. You don't use the calories and expect to lose weight. You don't use a fucking, you don't be like, like the way people talk to me sometimes, they're like, my calories, I need my calories. Shut the fuck up. You don't use the calories and just hope that the scale is going to drop. You don't fucking go on a stupid calorie calculator fucking website, type in your stupid numbers and just hope the scale is going to drop. You make the scale fucking drop and then you fucking figure out how many calories you're eating to make it drop. Okay, a good rule of thumb is fucking, obviously we're running a 100% caloric deficit if we're fasting for fucking days on end with no food. So let's say your body needs fucking 1,000 calories a day to maintain body weight where your fat ass is at right now. Well, if you don't eat any food, you're at a fucking 100% caloric deficit and your body's going to have to get the 1,000 calories from somewhere. Guess where it gets it from? Your fucking body fat. But this only happens when you fast. If you ate like fucking six jelly beans a day, guess what? You're fucking not gonna, you're gonna have high insulin and your body's gonna say, fuck, our insulin's high. It's not gonna break down body fat and it's gonna fucking start frying your goddamn muscles. Okay? Um, let's see here. So use the fucking scale. Always. Just use the fucking scale. If the scale's not dropping, the scale doesn't lie to you. Use the fucking scale. Check out my YouTube called The Scale Feedback System. It's idiot proof. You could, so the way it works is you would 
get on the scale, weigh yourself, and you don't get to eat again until you've lost at least one pound. And it doesn't have to be one pound. You could do it for five pounds or ten. So, like, let's say if I was 400 pounds, I get on the scale tonight and I weigh 400, okay? Then, if I decided to eat a meal, the rule is I would not be able to eat again until I weighed 390 if I was doing a 10-pound swing. Like, how idiot-proof is that? Use the fucking scale as feedback to figure out your fucking goddamn food intake. Like, do you think I count calories? I know calories pretty good in my head, but do you think I count? Fuck, I'm within fucking 500 with every meal. What I do know is I drive fast all day and I weigh myself every night before I fucking eat. And if I see the weight creeping up and I see a slight trend for the last three days, I know to cut back the fucking food a little bit. How fucking easy is that for maintenance? And if I start cutting a little too much, then I'll crank the food back up based on what my goal is. If I'm trying to build muscle, stay a certain body fat percentage, etc. It's, it's, people fuck the, people make this shit complicated. The shit's a fucking joke. It's easy. It's easy. Weight loss is a fucking joke. I can't believe people actually spend money on it. It's a fucking joke. <laughs> if you're spending money on weight loss, you're a fucking fool. Brittany asks, my dad has one kidney. Is it okay to fast and do kidney shots? Yes, he can fast if he has one kidney. Okay, you, everybody can fucking fast. Everybody. Um, Jenny asked something here. Would love a snake app for tracking. Okay, like some of the apps, there's an app where you'd log your weights and there's a trend. I like that one. But fasting time and shit, I don't fucking care. Don't fucking worry about posting fasting times. I don't fucking care. I want to see your fucking weight loss results. Okay? By the way, if you notice your posts aren't getting posted on this group, it's because they aren't good enough. Okay? This group, if I let every post come through, it would plug this fucking thread up. I want this thread so motivational that I don't have to yell at you anymore. All that you need to do is go through that fucking thread and be like, holy fuck, look at these results. Look at these results. I'm starting this tonight. That's why if you've got questions... Message me or one of the coaches or post your question in an existing thread of a post. And like, say for example, if somebody does a 48 hour fast and they don't put up pictures, they lost five pounds. That's good, but it ain't going to get approved. Okay. Five pounds in 48 hours is just run of the mill. I want to see some fucking results. Okay. I want to see people that are losing fucking 20 fucking pounds, 20 pounds. Get that up there. I want to see fucking accountability pictures because that creates lots of motivation even without a weight loss result just the accountability pictures create so much motivation that's one of the fucking smartest things i ever thought of doing in the first place with that group that works well for motivating others okay and yourself because it holds you accountable here's a good question jcs will fasting help tear acid reflux and irritable bowel syndrome yes yes I have relatives that have those diseases. Are you sure or is it not you? <laughs> anyway, so fast on the fucking snake juice and cayenne pepper will seriously fucking any, like any hormonal problems, okay? Um, any of this shit, any of this shit, any autoimmune issues, it'll beat, it'll beat, okay? All of the, if you have ulcers, intestinal ulcers, stomach ulcers, fast on the salt water and fucking cayenne pepper. Um, here's a good question, I think. <laughs> Skyler asks, once the fasting has come to the point where you need to eat, so need to eat, like, yeah, if you're feeling really, really weak or you're having some issues with your stomach or you feel nauseated after fasting for a fucking days on end and you have to fucking eat, then I would call that needing to eat. Okay, what are some examples of four to one ratio meals? Like low, if you're fasting long periods of time, that's all it is. If it didn't grow fucking in the bush fucking a thousand years ago, it's junk. Okay, that's it. Four to one fucking, if you want to keep full time ketosis, but if you're fasting like seven days at a time or even four days at a time, eat a four to one fucking meal that's veggies and fruit. I don't give a fuck. Okay, just keep the fucking intake down. If you want to fucking keep it, if you're not fasting as long, like say you're only hitting 72s or 48s, make sure you cut the carbs. But if you're going like fucking days on end, like five, six, seven days or longer, fuck, I don't give a fuck. Four to one. So it's like, 
If you weighed it and you ate like a kilogram of food, like one kilo of food, basically 200 fucking grams of it would be your meats and fats and the other fucking 800 grams would be fucking vegetables and fruit. Or just vegetables if you want to be strict, try to keep low fucking carb. Okay, but we're talking 500 grams of food's even better to go by. Okay, so that's it. Four to one. Fucking, the four would be, it doesn't have to be four to one either. It could be five to one, six to one, seven to one. You can cut the meat right back. I don't give a fuck. Just fucking watch the goddamn scale. Don't overeat on meat till you'll get constipated and fats. Crank the fucking fruit and vegetables up when you do re refeed. Make sure the fucking scale's dropping. Okay, that's it. Um, let's see here. Uh, Dave Wilson says mainstream doctors are drug dealers worse than the crack house you knew about growing up <laughs> pretty much pretty much and you know what's funny about that comment they'll actually lead people to the crack house because when they have them on all those fucking opioids then the person people actually become heroin addicts because of the fucking idiot doctors in the first place fucking morons Okay, Dan here has something that's a good one. I have done 348s and haven't went into ketosis per the strips. Fast fucking longer then. There, I answered that question. If you're pre-diabetic or type 2 diabetes, it's going to take longer than 48 hours to clear the blood sugar out of your blood. Okay? That's, the, that's like the exception. Fast until the fucking strips show fucking color. I have when I do the mainstream keto diet. Didn't lose weight with keto, however, so that's real handy. Fucking, that goes to show how fucking good the mainstream keto routine is when they're trying to tell you that you can just fucking eat whatever you, as much food as you want and lose weight, the idiots. Also, my breath goes rank. Why is that? Because you're detoxing like fucking crazy. Fast fucking longer. If your fucking strips aren't showing color, you're either fucking up the fast or you're not fasting long enough. And then once they are showing color, as long as you don't break the fast, those strips will show fucking excess ketones of the day you fucking die. As long as you don't break the goddamn fast. I have to say that because all these mainstream fucking keto idiots try to make it sound like that your kidneys get adapted to ketones and then the strips won't show ketones. Bullshit. Bullshit. When you fucking fast on a pure fast, you are fucking making so much ketones that your body can't even use them all up ever. And they're always in excess. Always. That is the biggest crock of fucking shit I ever heard. I know this shit because I've done these experiments fucking hardcore where especially when you dry fast your fucking ketones are through the fucking roof the whole time because obviously you're dehydrated but still the ketones are in your urine like crazy henry asks should you refeed after weeks include fats just veggies what would be ideal refeed meal honestly if you're fasting on the snake juice fuck your body is prepped to eat your body is prepped you don't even have to worry about it. Just make sure you eat mostly fucking vegetables. Four to one minimum. Don't go hammering down a fucking steak if you fucking fasted for two weeks. Like, fucking use your head and be smart. This isn't rocket science. Fucking use your fucking head. This whole thing, this whole lifestyle is just common sense. It, I, I take everything from an evolutionary standpoint. Okay? It's common sense. It's like, what would the cavemen have done? Because that's the way we're supposed to live. It's not what would the fucking modern day doctor do. It's what would the cavemen have done. That's what they would have done. Okay? They would have just ate. But now dry fasting is different and so is fucking plain water fasting is just trash. Dry fasting though, you want to come off a dry fast a little slower because you're fucking, you want to knock back like some coconut water, get to where you're like urinating fairly frequently again and then eat a fucking meal. Um... Okay, let's see here. Der oh, here's one. Janelle asks, After a three-day dry fast, I tried to refeed with watermelon and my throat hurt. It hurt to swallow like it felt smaller. Is that something possible? Possibly. I keep telling people that pretty much every symptom you're having is normal. Everything's going to be normal because you're fucking fasting. It's not like you're putting anything in your body that you're going to be allergic to. Okay. And a good answer to the question, if your body is having issues eating food, don't eat. 
How fucking simple is that? If you're having issues on your refeeds, don't have a refeed. Keep fucking fasting. Chances are you're detoxing and your body doesn't want to eat anyway. Um, let's see here. This Cassidy girl says to me, that's so funny that I talk about the thyroid. I was extremely healthy. It's, it's hereditary. It's not fucking genetic for fuck's sakes. You're not extremely healthy just because you're not overweight. If you're not fasting, you're not healthy. I tell people this. I don't care if you're fucking ripped to shreds. If you're not ripped to shreds following a fasting-focused lifestyle, you could still have crazy inflammation, skin issues, everything. Okay? All these mainstream fitness fucking gurus and shit, if they're not leading a fasting-focused lifestyle, they're not healthy. They're still suffering from, suffering from inflammation issues. So it doesn't, just because you're fucking lean doesn't mean you can't have a fucked-up thyroid from fucking eating a stupid diet. Fuck. Fucking shit pisses me off. Get that through your fucking head. This isn't just about fucking weight loss. It's about fasting for fucking health. Okay? So just because you're fucking lean and you're having health issues, don't go saying it's fucking genetic if you're not fasting. If you're not fasting and you're not fucking lean, every fucking issue can be fucking solved that you're having. Don't blame it on fucking genetics. And if it's hypothyroid or hyperthyroid, it doesn't make a damn bit of fucking difference. Cut the fucking meds and start fucking fasting. All it is is a hormone imbalance that'll be fixed in fucking a week. Like, I'm not telling you this just fucking to be an asshole. I get these stories every fucking day, okay? I get results every fucking day. That's why I'm saying that this fucking works. Do you understand? That is why, okay, I'm not saying anything that I haven't seen fixed 50 fucking times. Oh, let's see here. Here's one. Cher asks, oh, they're still talking about fucking thyroid issues. I beat that to death. Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Henry asks, ideal refeed meal after weeks. First fast for fucking weeks, okay? And then message me and be like, Cole, I fasted for weeks. And I'll be like, awesome job. Now then you can worry about refeeding, okay? Like, do it for fuck's sakes. Don't be like, what if I fasted for six fucking months? What do I do for a fucking refeed? Fucking go do it for fuck's sakes, then worry about it. Here's the fucking thing. This is what happens in the gym with fitness too. Quit fucking worrying about just getting the fucking result and start to enjoy the goddamn process. It's the same as fucking all these goddamn fucking, ah, uh, fuck, these aesthetics fucking competitors and shit. They want to go to the gym and do fucking fuck all and get fucking lean and ripped and then they fucking, they don't even want to be in there. They don't even want to fucking enjoy the fucking pain and the fucking process. This is why all these fucking fat fucking bodybuilders now are all have fucking guts because they're all hammering back insulin. Just asking to be type 1 diabetics. Any fucking, fucking bodybuilding coach out there that's telling people to take insulin should be fucking shot in the fucking head. Okay? People just fuck. They're lazy. Enjoy the process. Quit fucking worrying about the goddamn fucking, trust the fucking process, enjoy the fucking process, understand that fasting is fixing all your health issues, enjoy being fasted, and fucking the results will come. Fuck, enjoy it. Okay, you need to learn to enjoy it. Like, I get amped up when I'm fasted. I'm like excited when I'm fucking, like, I ate early today. Okay, so I ate already, and I fucking feel like, Kind of lazy right now because I ate. Insulin's cranked up. Fuck. But tomorrow morning I'll wake up and I'll feel like a million bucks and I'll want to tear the fucking gym apart. Okay? 
And people that are bitching about me swearing on here are going to be booted out of this fucking group. Shut the fuck up. How's that sound? If you fucking can't handle me swearing, go back to your fucking stupid old mad group, your stupid fucking keto fucking cult group, and get your mediocre fucking results. Fuck, if you're going to cry about me fucking swearing, you don't even deserve to be on this fucking group. You're lucky you're on this fucking group if you're bitching about that. Get the fuck out of here. Cry babies. Fuck, I can't stand cry baby tits. We fucking want results here. We're not fucking here to cater to your crybaby little fucking bullshit. Okay, here's a good question. Josh asks, will fasting alone cure gout or should I person take supplements? No, I'll just start fasting, man. Like That's like uric acid issues. Just start fucking fasting, okay? You're already, you've already been fasting. You shouldn't have any issues unless you start fucking fucking up your diet again with like booze. Booze is a huge one. Or like purines from other things like I fucking read so much shit I forget some shit but like fast okay don't you don't need fucking supplements to beat gout like think about it what if there was no supplements back like in, the, the gout didn't even exist until fucking modern day anyway cause gout you get gout from fucking up your goddamn lifestyle and not fasting and eating junk and drinking lots of fucking booze and being a drunk Okay, here's a question. Alexandra, have you had anyone experience refeed syndrome? I don't even know what that is. So when you refeed, you're either going to feel good or you're going to feel sick. Okay, so don't eat so fucking much. <laughs> when your body is fucking finally using leptin properly, so basically how that works, here's, here's starvation explained quick, okay? I have a YouTube on this too. Starvation mode explained. <laughs> Fuck. Your body fat produces leptin, goes to your brain. Leptin's high in your blood, tells your body if everything's working properly, which everyone's not. It says that you have lots of fat, speed up your metabolism, speed it up. I'll say that again, speed up your metabolism and make you not hungry. But guess what? Since your leptin's been high for fucking years on end because you're a fat ass, your body and your hormones are fucked up, not just being fat can fuck that up. No, just hormone fuck ups, not fasting can fuck up your leptin response as well. Your brain gets leptin resistant, even though you're a fat ass, brain can't see the leptin. And it's like, geez, there's no leptin, that means there's no fat. We better fucking slow down the metabolism, throw this fucker in starvation safety mode so he lives a few more days and make him feel hungry, crank up his fucking adrenaline, crank up his fucking cortisol, so then he'll go kill something. You see? That's starvation. Explained. Fat people can't starve. Fat motherfuckers can't fucking starve when they're fucking fasting. Now, you can throw yourself in starvation mode that's false, but break down muscle by eating six small meals a day. I don't, it doesn't have to be six, it could be two. Anything that keeps your insulin high throughout the day, not fasting essentially, you can break, if you're eating multiple meals a day at a caloric deficit, you will break down motherfucking muscle. If you're eating, if you're fasting at a caloric deficit, like fasting 24, longer than that, you will break down fat. That's how it fucking works. I try to explain this to people too. Like example, let's say you're, my body, let's use me. Let's say I need like about 2,500 to 3,000 calories a day, okay? Let's say I got a pizza in front of me that is exactly my maintenance calories, 2,500. If I took that fucking, or sorry, that's a, sorry. S say I got a pizza in front of me that is a, th is a thousand calories. So it's 1,500 calorie deficit from my maintenance, okay? I need 2,500, pizza's a thousand. If I ate one slice of that pizza, so six slices in the day, so if I eat one slice like every three hours at a caloric deficit, I will fucking burn muscle mass like fucking crazy continuing that routine. Now, if I took the whole pizza and fucking stuffed it into a fucking five minute window and wolfed down a thousand calories at the end of the day, I actually won't burn muscle, okay? That would be like a fucking one meal a day routine when you're lean, when you're trying to cut slower. But the reason OMAD's a fucking joke, because nobody fucking watches their goddamn calorie intake for one. For two, it doesn't heal anything. 
You're not fasting long enough to heal these nasty ass health issues. Like, you're not going to fucking cure diabetes in fucking a few weeks on fucking stupid OMAD. You're not going to cure skin issues in a couple of weeks on fucking OMAD. Reckless, fucking, lazy ass, fucking OMAD. Which means one meal a day. I used to promote that a long time ago when I started fasting. But since then, I fucking evolved because I know the fucking results are a joke. Okay? That's how it works. If you're eating multiple meals a day at a caloric deficit, you will fucking break down muscle. You will get better results if you packed all the food into the tightest eating window possible. Even better if you took two days worth of fucking food. So let's say I was going to eat a thousand calorie pizza every day for a week. My best result would be if I ate like three of those pizzas for 3,000 calories every third fucking day. I'll even get a better result. Pack it. It doesn't have to. You could pack all that food that you'd normally eat in like two days when you're at a deficit into like fucking the whole week. Okay? That's how this works. You're, you need the fast. You need to keep your insulin low. Okay? Eating multiple meals a day doesn't keep your fucking insulin down. It's all about insulin fucking levels. It's it. Insulin's low. You're going to get to a point where you're in a truly fasted state burning body fat. That's the definition of fucking fasting via the snake diet and my definition. True fasting means your insulin is rock motherfucking bottom. Okay? Your stupid fucking mainstream keto routine will still spike your insulin. Okay? It won't kick you out of fat burning mode, but it will spike your insulin so you can still be in semi fat burning mode, but the problem is you're burning muscle too. Okay? Insulin... That's the definition of fasting and my, that's my definition. Insulin's going to be rock fucking bottom and then you're fucking fasting. Everything else is a fucking joke. Oh, let's see here. Bobby asks, after 72 hours soft dry fast, that's a good, that's a good one. See, that's a good fast. 72 hours soft dry fast is pretty hardcore. 12 hours after when I add cucumbers, can I also add some pickles? You could eat some pickles. Thing is, like, there's calcium in there. Like, basically, it's pool shock is what it is. So that's why I don't push pickles because there's a lot of shit in the pickle juice that I don't want you fucking just ingesting all the time. I'm all about eating raw, natural, okay? I don't want it man-made. I want it fucking as clean as you can get it, okay? Like, what I eat is fucking... I always... That's how I shop for food now. It's always clean, I'll eat like the whole apple. I'll eat a cucumber. Okay? I won't eat I won't eat like guacamole anymore. I'll eat avocados. I won't eat anything that's man-made. Like obviously it's not all organic, but it's the best I can do cuz I'm fucking poor and I can't afford organic food. Maybe someday when I'm famous or some shit, then I'll be able to have organic food. Moose asks, "My friend is hypoglycemic." Can I get her on the diet? Yeah. Fuck, just fucking watch your fucking blood sugar fast as hard as you can. And if the blood sugar drops below 60 or like below like 3.3, eat a little bit of food. And don't make it sound like your friend is hypoglycemic, like it's some sort of fucking disease. She's temporary, temporarily hypoglycemic. It can be fucking fixed in no time flat. Okay, don't make it sound like you got this shit. It's like it can get, you can get rid of it so quick. All this crap. Um, here's a question. My six-year-old son is fasting. My six, here's a good one. My six-year-old son is fasting every morning. Will it cure asthma or does it need to dry fast? Good question. I've had people actually beat asthma. If you're going to get your kid fasting, here's how you want to do it. Six years old, if they're going to school, because obviously the fucking goddamn school will probably call social services on your ass because they're a bunch of fat idiots. So, no breakfast, okay? No breakfast. Send your kid to school, keep the carbs low, especially if they're trying to beat a health ailment, okay? That's when you do want to keep carbs low until it's all fucking said and done because that could be the problem. And then when they get home, give them a fucking nice big meal after school and you'll keep all the food at least within about a six-hour window. That's pretty good, okay? If every fucking kid in North America was eating on a six-hour eating window... Getting their fucking getting their maintenance calories intake that they needed to stay lean, that would be the fucking start of a revolution because the whole fucking obesity epidemic starting with kids. 
It's fucking gross. It's gross. It's fucking gross how many fat kids I see out and about. It's like, fuck. And then, of course, the parents are fat ass, too. So, like, fuck me. It's just a... Just like... It, it, it is, they call it a, a disease. It almost fucking works like a fucking disease the way people just fucking let it fucking happen because they just don't give a fuck because they just... They just accept it. Their people are so brainwashed, they just accept it. It's like, oh, I'm fat. I'm fat. I can't do anything about it. I might as well just fucking start a fat acceptance fucking mob. You know, fucking fast. Lose the goddamn weight and get happy for fuck's sakes. And you have, if you have people in your life holding you back, cut them loose. Cut them the fuck out of your life. That's probably one of the biggest problems I have. The protocol is a joke. Salt water. Fast as hard as you fucking can. Okay, there's fucking, that's it. I got dry fasting protocols. Fast, 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 until you lose all the weight. Don't listen to your stupid fucking friends. Show them the results, okay? Shut shut them the fuck up. Okay, that's, your friends and family are going to be your worst fucking enemy. Shut them the fuck up. Tell them to fuck off. Add them to my group. Send them my YouTubes. And I'll tell them to fuck off for you. Because they're just brainwashed and they need help just the same as you. But they're scared, hey? It's fear that makes them run their fucking mouth. Remember that. It's fear. So what you need to do is get results, show them it works, and then you can tell them to shut the fuck up. But as long as you're still fat, you can't really tell them to shut up because you're fat still. So fucking this is where you need to tell them so you don't go out to the bar and drink. I'm going to hit that on the head real quick too. Alcohol. Fuck. People always ask me, can I still drink on this fucking way of life or this diet? First question is, why do you need to drink? Why are you drinking in the first place? Like, do you hate your fucking husband? Do you hate your wife? Do you hate your fucking job? Do you fucking, are you scared to be broke? Are you, are you chasing money? Do you think you need to fucking buy your kids a bunch of toys when you just need your fucking fat ass at home throwing around a baseball that costs five bucks? Is that, is that the problem? Figure out why the fuck you need to drink in the first place. Are you too pussy to tell the boys to fuck off? Are you too pussy to fucking just get more self-development? Crank up your self-development and fucking be somebody? Not just a fucking drunk ape? Okay? Why do you need to drink? Ask yourself that. Can I have coffee on this? Can I have drugs on this? Can I have this on this? Why do you need that shit? Fucking reevaluate your fucking life. Okay? Reevaluate what you actually need in life and what you fucking don't need. Like, there's a girl that I was talking to today, and she got a hold of me because she's helping somebody else, and I guess this lady owns, like, a fucking goddamn airline. And, like, you'd think she'd be happy since she's, like, a fucking goddamn multimillionaire, but she's not, and she's fat. She just goes to show how much money really means. It really means nothing, okay? Like, I tell people this, too. They're, like, people keep hitting me up. They're, like, hey, you need to fucking... You need to like sell this, you need to sell that, you need, you need to fucking, you need to get yourself out there. I'm like, holy fuck, aren't I getting myself out there as it is? How do you think I grew this group this fucking quick? The reason I grew the group this fast is because I know how to create influence because I'm not asking for money. I've asked for money in the past and it didn't get me any fucking results. People gotta wake the fuck up and take a fucking lesson from how I fucking get my fucking word out there. Okay, people are always thinking about money. Fucking not influence. Okay, you gotta fucking figure out what you actually want in life. Do you need the big house? So I tell people, like, I actually want to be fucking poor. Because that's motivating to average Joes. Because look at all the fucking stupid asshole fat loss coaches on the internet. They're always flashing their shit. Like, even one guy, I've actually learned a bit from him back in the day. Was But now I'm fucking, I've graduated, I'm like 10 times over. Is Kino Body on YouTube. He's always flashing his fucking mansion and his car and making it look like he's fucking... Like, he is rich. He fucking didn't have to fucking grind. But that's not relatable to regular people because they're poor. All these fucking assholes are driving around in their fucking stupid fucking Lamborghinis like Ty Lopez and Gary V. Like, who fucking cares? Who fucking gives a fuck about Gary fucking V? You think they're going to have a statue of Gary V in 100 years? No. Because you know why? You know how these guys make their money? They're making money on feeding the addiction of other people. Their addiction to money. They're using, they're making money off your addiction to money. See, if you're a money addict, you're going to be a fat ass too. This all goes hand in hand. You got to cut everything out of your life. Not just the food. You got to cut down the fear of not having money. 
You gotta fucking cut it all. If you wanna do some fucking self-development drills, go sleep in your fucking car for a week like a bum. And then all of a sudden you'll realize that you don't need a fucking half a million dollar house. I was that guy. I had a goddamn house in the golf course, the whole nine yards. Hundred fuck two hundred thousand dollars worth of vehicles, fuck like four fucking street bikes. Fuck didn't even care. I wasn't even happy for fuck's sakes. Why do you think I'm here today talking like this? Because I've been there, done that. I know where that road goes. It just goes to basically having no fucking, you have no purpose. That's it. If you're not helping people in a genuine fashion, in genuine fashion, you have no fucking purpose. This is turning into a little bit of a self-fucking motivation talk tonight, but this stuff's more important, in fact, than the diet, because the diet works. All you gotta do is fucking grow the balls to fast and face your fear of fucking judgment and then next thing you know, you're fucking losing fucking 20, 30, 40 pounds in a month. Like that's how much weight you can lose on this. It, you get out of fasting exactly what you put in. If your little fasting routine's a fucking little pussy ass, bitch ass routine, you're gonna get pussy ass, little bitch ass fucking results. If your fucking exercise routine is a bitch ass, pussy ass, pussy ass routine with no fucking intensity, you're gonna get fucking pussy ass, bitch ass results. And you get out of it exactly what you fucking put in. Exactly what you put in. It's too perfect, okay? It's fucking free. It's fucking, you got all the motivation you need from me and my fucking group. It's fucking free. Lose the fucking weight. Truth be told, if you're a fat ass and you're not losing at least 20 pounds in that first month, you're a fucking pussy and you're being lazy and you're not fasting hard enough. If you're fucking fat, you should be losing at least 20 pounds in that first fucking month. If my brain was in your head, I'd be losing fucking 40. Fucking 60. There's a guy that just lost fucking 56 pounds in 30 days on my group. 56 pounds in 30 fucking days. Anybody that wants to try to argue that he lost muscle or lost a bunch of muscle, like, get fucking real. 56 pounds? Fuck, if he lost 56 pounds of muscle, he'd be fucking so fucking weak he wouldn't be able to stand up. Like, people are fucking morons. And then you times that by two months of my mind was in that guy's body, I'd lose 120 pounds in two fucking months. That's how fast you can get to the fucking best version of yourself as far as the weight loss goes. After that, it's just a bit of healing with dry fasting to tighten up loose skin if that's a problem. You can get your results within a couple of months, most of you, unless you're extreme, okay? If you're not extreme, though, and you're like, say, if you're like 33% heavier than you should be, so let's say you're like, you're a male that should be about 200 pounds, but you're 300, you should be able to fucking push that shit hard to where you could lose you could lose all that weight in fucking two months. But you should for sure be able to do it in three. You should be able to lose 100 pounds in three months if you're a 300 pound male that needs to get down to 200. If you're a woman that should be say, oh, what's the numbers? Let's say, let's use 100 pounds for easy math. If you're a woman that, weighs, that should be 100 pounds, which is a light woman, and you weigh 150, you should be able to lose that 50 pounds in like two fucking months, maybe two and a half. Causing you to get ripped. If you're a woman that should be say 125, 130 pounds, I'm using 30% here, right? So do the math, 200 pounds, you should be able to cut it all in like two fucking months if you fucking dedicate yourself and fucking build that fucking goddamn, basically you need to build that consistency and get used to that fucking way of life. And it doesn't take long. Because here's the thing. The very first fast you do, fast as long as you fucking can, no matter what. Because that builds confidence. And once you have the confidence that you just prove the mainstream bullshit to be false, when they say that you need food or water or whatever in this many days or you'll die, when you prove that a lie, then you got balls. And then... Even if you fuck up the fasting and fucking get fucked up one weekend at a wedding or something, it's not going to matter because you got the balls, you fasted hardcore before, you could do it again. Okay? It's that fucking simple. Once you got the fucking balls, you can just fucking fast. And as long as your fasting outweighs your fuck ups, you will lose weight like motherfucking crazy. Okay? I'm going to cut that off here tonight. So... Subscribe to my fucking YouTube channel. The, all these videos are on there. Subscribe to my Instagram. It's called snake underscore diet underscore wizard. I'm trying to put more shit on there. Go like 
my snake diet Facebook business page. It's just called Snake Diet. There's a whole bunch of fucking testimonials there. Okay? Give me a fucking five-star review. It helps spool up my page. Okay? Don't be a fucking asshole and give me a one-star review when you haven't even fucking fasted a fucking hour in your life. Okay? So, everybody have a great night. Also, like I said again, get your fucking goddamn accountability pictures up on that group. Face that fear of judgment. Okay, if anybody says shit about your pictures, I will fucking block them from the group. Or one of the fucking snake diet moderators or coaches will. Feel free to message the coaches as well. Okay? If your fucking post doesn't get posted and it was a question, message a coach. And if your post doesn't get posted and it was like a result, I want most of the posts are going to have to have pictures pretty much from now on. Unless you have a really good write-up about how you beat a health ailment. I want motherfucking pictures, okay? I want before and afters. I want your fucking starting weight. I want fat loss trends. I want your fucking story. I want even you to tell why you got fat. I want fucking accountability photos. I want you to fucking take the photos with some decent quality, front, side, and back. I want you to show some fucking skin. I want you to show your fucking loose ass gut because that is fucking genuine, okay? That shows vulnerability, And that creates massive motherfucking motivation. Have a great night and get that fat in ya.